Hi, good morning. Thank you very much, Dr. Sotelo, for this kind introduction. It's a pleasure to be in this high-level panel. Actually, many of the people and institutions who is in the panel are people who I, I admire and, file and follow for my entire career. So it's uh, very nice to be here uh, and talk um, on this. I prepare a small um, presentation. I took the, the more the SDGs and the 2030 agenda, which is the area I've been working for the last 40 years of my career. So I feel more comfortable talking about that. And, uh, and uh, I will start talking a little bit about the frameworks on this, and then some information that is amazing information that uh, just come out from the last report of the 2030 Agenda. I will walk on that information and then some final uh, message. Thank you very much again. It's a pleasure to be with this high-level panel. It's an honor for me. And uh, let's go. Next slide, please. So this is the, the framework, uh, the initial framework for the 2030 Agenda. That was presented by UNDP at uh, the Agenda uh, 2030 starts in Rio uh, with the meeting called Rio Plus 20 in 2012. And as you can see in the center of this, uh, of this, um, I see, uh, in the center of this uh, framework is three messages, sustainability, equity, and human rights. So this is a basic, framework for the whole uh, 2030 agenda, even that the whole principles that was uh, around it didn't really uh, keep on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having, sorry for interrupting, but I'm having trouble seeing it. Uh, it's kind of uh, strange characters in the presentation. Is that my, my view or? Hello? So um, anyway, let's keep on. This is the, the base here was to show you that uh, the, the present, the that scheme which have inequities, equities and human rights in the center become the Agenda 2030 and the SDGs. We're trying to look into more the goals, the SDGs, but actually I want to show that mainly the first and most important message of the agenda is on equity, sustainability, and human rights. So this is the day the, the Agenda 2030 was launched in the New York. As you see, it was an impressive uh, um, picture from the UN building with all the SDGs. Next one. And after this, the, they have been working around it. And this was uh, the, what they call the soup plate. As a proposal from WHO, Dr. Becerra probably remember it because I was also at PAO. And this was constructed to, uh, to the uh, health promotion meeting in Shanghai showing the SDG3 is actually related to the all other 16 SDGs in different ways. And the uh, next one, as we, every year, the UN present this global report on the SDGs, which is the one I use to show you the impact of COVID in inequities and the widening the gaps of that. Uh, next one. Also, we have the in the report, and this is the, just to give a glimpse. Then we go on in uh, each of the SDGs. But in general, as you can see here, you have this general message that there are uh, the SDG is impact is being impacted by the COVID pretty much as you can see, uh, because of the most vulnerable population is more 
impact, particularly the well-being of children. As you can see here, many children is out of the school and also is losing the daily meal they got in the schools. And there are these, uh, already very well know, the older people is being much more prone to die of COVID than others. So this is just to give an idea how much is the, how big is the challenge on this. Next one. So the, uh, also in the region, we have another important report. This is the Just Society Health Equity and Digni Dignity Lives. This is a PAHO commission. I had the opportunity to be at PAHO when we established the commission. Dr. Becerra also should remember that very well. And it was uh, one of my last tasks and it was launched last year by Dr. Etienne during the directing council. And this report, next one, use a different uh, network, a different framework, but it's very similar to the principles of the 23rd Agenda. So this is just to show you how close we are in principles, looking into inequities, looking into the uh, existing problems between um, different social uh, distributions in the society. Next one. This is uh, another uh, framework. It's proposed by the UN Sustainable Development Solution Network, which also based on the 23rd agenda, try to group the SDGs around six transformations, which will underpin the, transform, the implementation of the SDGs. As you can see here, the first one is about education, gender and inequality, and the second one is about health. So as you can see, all the frameworks from the UN, most global, the regional, PAHO Commission, and this, which is more an academic network, they all get in, uh, into the core of the, 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 the messages, the uh, equity and human rights. And that uh, is one important message and, uh, and important. They are taking this as the roadmaps to rebuild the world after the pandemics. Next one. So going back to the UN report, this is just to show you uh, when we start this pandemic, we are read off track of the SDG one, which is end poverty. And it's not only that, but also we, we, we see there are this um, very uh, complicated situation where um, the the 71 million people has been pushed into the extreme poverty in 2020. And 4 billion people did not have any of the social protection. Uh, and this is a big challenge for the equity and the healthy equity in the region. Next one. When you go into the, the detail, and this is a graph from the report, you can see that the expectation we had before COVID was to lower the percentage of people living below $1.9 a day to 7.4. But actually now uh, the projection is that will be higher than what we have in 2019 by 0.5%, which is a big number when you think about the world population. Next one. Also, uh, in the region, uh, sorry, I don't know what's happening with the slides, not showing this, but this is a map from uh, Baltimore, where we are in the, from the PAHO Commission uh, report, showing that this is something is not only uh, true globally, but also locally. And this shows the difference between life expectancy in Baltimore by different neighbors. And that goes from 68 to 80 years of uh, age in life expectancy. Next one, please. So um, the number three, which is food insecurity, and uh, we are commemorate today, the World Food Program was our, the, um, the, the Nobel Prize, which is very important. But we know the world is in a crisis, in a food crisis, and the COVID affect pretty much this. And next one, as you can see here, is stent 
and wasting is a very problematic in the world world particularly in latin america is not the biggest in the world but still we do have this problem next one and uh, one other problem we have in the region is this widening between uh, quintiles in the society. So those who are more poor is the one that has much more risk to be in the children's, to be in the stunting and wasting. And this is uh, showing some countries where, you know, the gap between one another is very big. Next one. So this is the number three which is the SDG on health. And of course, everybody's concerned about the reverse of decades of improvements, and also, and particularly about the immunization, which we see there are many countries that are struggling now because they have all the resources put into COVID and they have less attention, attention in other uh, health programs. I don't want to go into much detail, but next one, I, can sh I want to show you some of the uh, the situation I'm really sorry about the slides because i don't know what's happening this is a very nice study done by aracho castro our colleague from uh, tulane university where she uh, this is one of the first you know academic studies that's come out for the region on the inequity but i'm sure our colleague from eclac will show us more about that on the, from the eclac but this is showing how much uh, the maternal mortality will be uh, have problems depend of the level of coverage interruption you have, 5, 10, or 25%. And uh, I can, the graph is not showing here, but uh, the only country that will uh, still reach the SDG is Costa Rica. Every other country will miss the SDG on maternal mortality. The next one is about the uh, under five mortality. Uh, this is showing better. <laughs> you can see here the countries are also having, you know, this uh, great gradient of uh, losing the target, the SDG targets, the line there, and uh, increasing the level of uh, under five mortality depend of how much will be the impact in the health system if you have a five lower ball and if you have 25 percent is the higher ball and the men of the countries next one please the, this is the for the region from the power report the situation before as you can see here this is the possibility the risk of uh, of the population to go in poverty because of surgical cost and they see there are countries that is much is higher than 50% the risk, and the, with the COVID and with the economic crisis, that will be much worse. Next one, please. This is about the uh, SDG 4, which we all know was very well impacting the whole region, uh, the education, and uh, we is impressive. The lower left corner, you can see 90% of all students is now out of the school. And the being out of the school for many uh, cities means the, the children are uh, not having the basic daily hygiene, meal, education, and physical education every day, which is a big impact, plus all the problems with uh, domestic violence that also evolved on this. And for another side, and particularly only for the education, uh, the, is the, the virtual education is out of reach for at least 500 million students in the world. It's a huge number. And in the region, particularly, it's very important. We know about the digital divide we have in the region. Next one is about the um, water and sanitation, which we all know is a basic uh, uh, measure no pharmaceutical measure for control of the pandemic. And you can see that it was billions of people still lacking the water and sanitation services. And we have 3 billion people in the world that doesn't have access to basic hand wash facilities at home, which is one of the recommendations for the non-pharmaceutical intervention. Uh, as the next one 
this was the trend on the solving the problem, which probably will be reversed. Uh, we don't have up to now a clear picture where it's going, but not going the where it need to go as this graph show. Next one. And also you see in the world, only 40%, 60% uh, of the uh, population have access for hand washing facility with soap and water at home. 40% doesn't have it, which is a huge number in, in general. Next one is about the inequity itself, inequality. And the two things we know here, one is the most vulnerable groups for inequity is the most uh, vulnerable which is the elderly, the disabled, the women, the children. And also we know that the global recession is going to make the uh, uh, development aid much lower. That was a trend before COVID and uh, will be a trend in the next phase, next year and so on. And particularly for the region, for some countries, this is very important. Uh, also, the next one is about the the cities, and uh, you know, and when it started the COVID, there are this uh, very clear picture where COVID is a urban problem, and the transmission was in big cities and start in, in big cities and keep uh, as the big problem in big cities. So that's another important issue to look into urban health in the future where we have already these inequities. And the uh, next one, one problem that was improved was air pollution, which as you can see, sorry again, it's not showing the map, but uh, air pollution is a problem already in the region. We have an improvement when it started the COVID because of the lower of transportation and energy production, but now it's coming back, unfortunately. So next one is about the improvement we have on climate change, the emissions uh, was dropped 6% of the greenhouse emissions, which is less than 7.6% that's needed to, to reach the Paris Agreement. But that's something we forget, but it's coming back. The good news is that we show we can do it. So green, uh, green recovery is something possible, is something tangible, is nothing out of the reach but uh, we see it uh, is a big challenge. The next one, you can see uh, the one of the core of the pandemic, which is the biodiversity. And uh, we know uh, wildlife trafficking play a role. We don't know exactly how. And also we know the non-preservation of uh, the forest also have an important impact in, the, uh, in pandemics and in any health crisis. Unfortunately, in the region, these two problems is running wild and uh, is a problem that need to be addressed. So the next one is the last uh, SDG on, on uh, peace and, and inclusive society. And you can see one of the biggest problems in the bottom is the prisoners in overcrowd prison. We see that 60% of the is is uh, is in the overcrowded regions. Next one, this uh, uh, as you can see in Americas. If you sum both, you know you see we have uh, at least 54 percent of the prisoners are in overcrowded regions, which is a problem for the uh, COVID transmission, but will be a problem in the future. So uh, going to the end, the next one I show you the Dr. Anton Guterres, the Secretary General of the UN, when uh, he start the uh, the last uh, General Assembly, he made this asseveration. Uh, finally, when you get past the, this crisis, which we will, we'll face a choice. We can go back to the world as it was before, or deal decisively with those issues that make us all unnecessarily vulnerable to Christ. And he made this, uh, this affirmation, at the same time he called for solidarity. So it's, uh, this is the way to go. Uh, the roadmap is the 23rd agenda and it's sustainable development goal. Of course, we need to take a hard look on, the, on many of the implementation, the next one. And uh, we have a good news. 
there are uh, many um, different uh, uh, initiatives to deal with equity. Uh, I'm not going to details, but you have the Sustainable Health Equity Movement, which deals with equity during the response of the COVID-19. The Health Equity Network of the Americas, which was born together and to support the PAHO report. No, it's not a PAHO network, but uh, was uh, trying to support it. The Framework Convention on Global Health, which deals with the right to health. The award in 2050, which is an uh, academic exercise looking to all this green recovery and uh, sustainable recovery. The UN Technological Facilitation Mechanism, which is from the UN DESA, uh, is part of the 23rd Agenda and also deal with the issue of the equity. And finally, UN SDSN, the Sustainable Development Solution Network, which is proposing the sixth transformation and looking to promote concrete experience at the field. So thank you very much. I, unfortunately, some of the slides wasn't show very well, but I hope I, I make my point on the on set the scene for this wonderful panel to comment. And thank again, it's an honor to have this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sotelo. Thank you, Dr. Becerra. And thank you, Dr. Espinal for this kind invitation.